Well, thanks to uh, some new good friends, guy went ahead and made it back from the power tour live, which is mind-bottling. But overall, the old Chevelle, she did pretty good. A couple little things guy had to work out, but mechanically, overall, she's sound. If a guy needs to complain about something, I'm going to complain on the gauges in this thing. I just can't see nothing. And then I rigged up some gauges down by the shifter because I didn't want to drill any new holes in the dash and all that stuff. It's just got to go. Did a lot of research on the lines and ended up picking up a kit here. But before we get to that, I'm going to show you what I'm dealing with and why I'm going to sink some more money into this turd. And then we'll unpack these beautiful things and let you know why I chose on them. Well, you slide into the old cockpit here and may not be able to see it on your end of things but basically all of this right here in the speedos fogged up and dirty and guy sits up so high in here that I basically can read 20 miles an hour and 90 so that's about where I ride this is really inconvenient and gotta go and then I got some junk down here but Clearly the shifter's in the way, and you gotta do the old lean move every time a guy wants to get on the vittles. So I'd like to get rid of this, clean up a little bit of this, and we're gonna go digital in here, guys. That's right, I did say electrotronic, but don't panic. I went ahead and called these fellers, and they're really nice and savvy, and they assured that a feller like me could get them in, so if I could do it, you can do it. And I felt even more comfortable when I pulled these out of the box because bam, made in America, boom, lifetime guarantee. And then there's a picture of Rocky on there as well. So win, win, win. The other thing I noticed, if you're like me, reading stuff just kind of glazes the eyes over. So when you flip through this guy, you get all these pictures and diagrams and arrows and whatnot. I mean, you can get through these directions really easy. Also in the kit, you get all new sensors here. You got some oil pressures there. You got a water temp. You even got a whoops hardware bag thing to convert the old speedo to electrotronic, and then some other fittings in there that a guy needs. And you get new lenses. These are smoke black. That's going to look really nice. And then of course the actual gauge cluster here. And uh, that looks like something out of the International Space Station. Looks sweet. I mean, it's, it's constructed well. I don't know that a guy needs to bend on them like that, but made in the USA. That's correct. So, these come in red and white. I chose red for the obvious reason. But uh, I suppose white would look nice for a feller too. Also, this comes with some other kit or something that plugs into this. And a guy can even do the old zero to 60, quarter mile time and some other stuff. So find another kit that does that at this price. Well, you can go ahead and not believe a guy, but I went ahead and read through the instructions here. A couple takeaways for me, if you've got an LS swap or you're thinking of doing one, they got you covered in here on that. And then for some reason, if you've got a Ford, Chrysler, Stuart Warner, or some sort of universal fuel sender for some reason, they'll show you how to set them up, and it's just dip switches. So that's nice. You can even set your odometer. If you've got a factory unit in here and you want to keep the miles on her, you could set them up too. Wiring, where'd that go? Uh, seems really straightforward, actually. And uh, here it is. Just need a ground. That goes pretty much anywhere. You need a constant, so 12 volts to the battery, and then a switch 12 volt power source, and then everything else you already got, guys. I mean, it's blinker left, right, what have you, this, what have you, that, and water. Tack goes right to the old HEI on this unit, so it seems pretty simple. I'm just going to snag out the old unit and see what we got going on underneath there. Probably a mouse nest for 58, and then we'll snip in the new unit. 
Well, if you've ever taken a GM dash apart, you know that 98% of the process, which is about 17 hours, is just getting the headlight switch out of her. And uh, there's a little button on top of there that you got to depress, and then you can pull the old headlight knob out. And when you got mitts and ogre arms like this, getting the guy's phalanges up there is just tough. It's all about the angle of attack on these. Oh, okay. Well, that ain't right. I don't know what that is. That's way too squishy. Oh, that's definitely a mouse nest. It's time to regroup. The guy's blood's just rushing to his head. Oh. oh, I think I got her. Yeah, there we go. Out. Now the rest of it should be really easy. Well, now I'm just going to take the tachometer down and start snipping out all the screws that hold the original bezel on here and then we'll see what we got going on behind that. All the screws are out, radio knobs, radio retaining nuts, and she's pretty floppy in here. Now I just got to lower the column down a titch so I can get this dash unit out. And that's just two 7 16 bolts on the column and boom, she'll drop down. All right, oh. Oh, yeah. Well, there's the smell we've been chasing for a while. It just didn't matter how many uh, little trees we put in here. It smelled like mice. And that's also what I dug my hand in for 30 minutes. Great. I went ahead and used the Mouse Sucker 500. And cleaned out as much as I could behind the dash for now. And, you know, dipped if there weren't about, well, 3 or 17 mice under there. So... Maybe she'll smell a little bit better now. Well, if a guy doesn't want to die from a disease he can't pronounce after cleaning out 48 mice from his car, I strongly recommend cleaning your hands up a little bit. These gunk wipes don't have a mouse on the side, but I trust them. That's much better. Plus, they smell nice. To get this the rest of the way out, I would strongly recommend disconnecting the Speedo cable first. Then you can pull this back you get some more room in there. And that's just held on with the spring clip. Just press it down and pull the cable and that'll come right out. Then you can unplug all of the lights in the back. And then the cigarette lighter will have this little retainer cup going over the back that just screws on. There's a ground connected to that you need to disconnect. And then a little quarter inch bolt has another ground. And then that should loosen this whole thing up here. If all goes well, we should be able to just lift the whole unit out now. Yep, there it comes. So here's what the back side looks like. And here's the cigarette lighter that has a ring that goes around it for ground. That's what we took off there. This is where that ground connects with the quarter inch. And then the rest of these are just where all the lights plug in. This is your fuel sending unit, plugs in here. Your wiper switch plugs in here. This is your astro ventilation that just slips right off. And here's that spring clip on the speedo cable I was talking about. You can just press that in and then that'll slide right off. So all this is pretty straightforward. It's just the guy's got to get his hands behind there and get into it. So here's what the car looks like. Oh, another mouse. And I've got a tremendous amount of cleaning to do in here, obviously, to get this. Uh, oh, another mouse over there cleaned up and smelling nice and then we'll start reassembly here shortly but here's the fuel sending unit we're going to get into here's the high beam I mean a lot of this is really accessible right now and something to note they do not want you hooking directly to the rheostat on the dimmer they want you into the park lights um, for the gauge cluster so we'll have to pay attention to that here too now all I've got to do is just run the rest of these quarter inch screws out of here and this little part's going to pop off but another thing to note here is if you look close it labels all these wires for you right on the back of this uh, light blue dark blue gray i mean it tells you all the colors that you're going to need to tap into for your turn signals uh brake light things like that so keep this close by when you're putting a new one in and also hang on to your hardware because the, the old instructions say you use a lot of the original hardware, so I'm 
Try not to lose these little devils. Ah. There we go. Old set out. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up a bit since we got her out. We're off to the sensor part of the installation. Let's start with the water. Put the uh, temp sensor in the provided uh, fitting here. 7 8 inch wrench. Off you go. And if you're fast enough, you could do the old <whistles> out with the old, in with the new, and only spill about a half gallon of coolant on the floor. Most people would probably go ahead and put something down, but I just let her run all over the place. All right. All right, I'm not going to take this sending unit part out because I don't want it to leak out of the middle, so I'm just going to let this twist up. And hopefully, I can get this in there relatively quickly. Just like that ish. There. That's not so bad. I really wouldn't recommend using spade fittings. Use ring connectors. That way you're not chasing down electrical issues after you get her put together. There, that's all done. I'll come back with some looming from wire care and uh, run it along the valley cover and over. But for now, I'll just go down like that. Now I can get the old sender out here and then we'll go uh, work on the distributor for the tack. All right, I got my green wire all done here for the tachometer. And on GMHEIs, it's super easy. On the side of the distributor cap here, it literally says tack. And if you've got a coil, just snip it onto the negative side of the coil and we get the same thing. Let's just plug in real easy. Working on the oil pressure sending unit here. I have a El Cheapo aftermarket one, so it's just a 7 16 wrench. Pop this fitting out, little plastic line. If yours is factory, you may have a canister one like this already, but remember, you can't use the old one. You got to use the one supplied in the kit. And this actually has a really nice finger nut on it, so once you get her plopped down in place, guy doesn't have to fight around with the wrench back there. But I'm kind of noticing I might have an issue here. I've got an aftermarket intake on this and the back of the intake is thicker than the stock one. So the threads on this aren't long enough before it sits down on the block. It's probably going to interfere with the intake and I won't be able to make this connection. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll get you in here. Right down there is the hole for the oil pressure sending unit. And you can see the back of this intake is really raised up. So it's clearly not going to sit all the way down in there and, and tighten up. So I'm going to run down to the hardware store and just grab a street elbow and flare that out at a 45 degree angle. And then I'll be able to plug that in there, I think. Filler's back. Quick trip to the hardware store. $2 fitting here. Cheap and easy for a guy. And all I'm going to do is plug this into the block. Gives me a 45. And then run my oil pressure sending unit into that. That's what it's going to sit like, and that'll get me away from that intake here so it doesn't interfere with the old electrotronic sending unit here, and away we go. Cheap and easy. Can't beat that. Now i got to get my arm back in there. There we go. That's all in. You can see it kicked off there, and I can get some uh, wire on that fitting now easy enough. On the speedometer, this part couldn't be any easier for a guy. You just pop the old cable out. Screw this on in the transmission. You got this plug here. Can't mess that up. Plug her in. You just have a sending wire, ground and switch positive. And two of these you're already doing anyway. You just snip them in the other ones and that's it. And crawl under and get this put in quick. There's the sending unit plugged in there. Just gotta take this plug. Snapping in place, and you're done. At this point, I think I'm going to go ahead and throw the lenses on, get her back into the dash unit, snip that back in, and then we can button down the wiring. So, I've already done one side, really straightforward. I've got the other lens ready, so I'll kind of just show you this process. Really straightforward. There's a spacer here that goes on first. 
And then on top of that spacer, there's this little washer. It sits over top of that. Like this. And then, you gotta pay attention to these lenses in this kit. They are stamped right and left, and they do only go on one side, and you can get them upside down and it won't fit correctly. Slide that in there, and then all you have to do is just drop these screws down, something like that, and that. One more, this one's a little off. I dropped my washer on there crooked. Get in there, that's, there we go. And then I'm just holding like this, get my nice lens dirty, flip them upside down. Careful not to scratch your lens. And then run the nuts on, and you're all set. 5 16 wrench and a Phillips screwdriver is all this takes. Really simple process, actually. All right, this dropper in place. See how it fits. Wow, perfect. All of the screw holes line up perfectly. That drops right in. All right, let's see what it looks like. There you go. Really cool looking, just all blacked out. All right, let's slide this thing back in. A couple things before I slid this unit back in is, took all the light bulbs out of the original instrumentation, and then I put all my new cabling together. Can't really see it zip tied everything together kind of in a bundle so it's easier to reach and then pulled all the wires to the dash up top now, i left myself plenty of length here so i'm hopeful to do all the connections on top of the dash unit and then i can organize everything stuff her back down in there and snip it back up the other thing is i'm going to be using these clamps here for a lot of the wiring and this is where you just slide one through add your wire that you're connecting to it and you just squeeze them down and the reason i'm doing that is well I'm lazy let's be honest but mainly i don't have it in me to cut apart this original harness in here just in case a guy wants to go back to factory i don't want to cut everything out of this thing that would be not good so wherever possible i'm going to be using these besides my obvious things like 12 volts and ground um, those you want to have a nice connection on but turn signals, parking brake, um, fuel sending unit, things like that, I'm not gonna snip them up. As far as the wire color for the headlight unit and the fuel sending unit, both of those are gonna be a brown or a tan, um, and that's gonna be for most GMs actually, so those will be really easy. Well, I'm gonna get my legs in here and start wiring, I guess. Everything's wired up, that wasn't so bad, and. That says a lot because I don't really like wiring. I'm going to clean it up here in a little bit, but a couple reminders if you haven't already, make sure you set your fuel dip switches on the back because this is the last chance you're going to get doing that easy enough. And that guy's going to want to test on it before you get much farther. And this comes right to life. We've got speedometer, temperature, fuel, oil pressure, volts, and then of course your RPM. And uh, it's in setup mode right now, so we can select cylinders and what have you. And then you got your clock up here. I've got all my reset and trigger buttons hanging on the bottom right now. I'll mount those guys up here in a little bit once I get everything pushed back in. Brought the car outside here so you can see them a little better. They look great. Here's what we got. Speedometer. Temps rising, still cold. 39 goes to 99, so a little less than half. Got the clock set already, idling right at 500, 36 pounds oil pressure, and working volt gauge. And uh, what I really like about this is I could just hit this button down here and get a tack recall. So when you borrow it to your kid for prom or your best friend, you can see how many onions they gave her. But let's go uh, 
give her a test run and test on them a little bit more. The blinkers look great. Uses the factory lens in there. They might be uh, blinking for you, but they're not. Uh, it's just the way the camera lens looks at it. But overall, these look fantastic. Super easy to read, which is what I was going for. And you have everything right in these three clusters here. Instead of having gauges down there under the dash. Uh, I should have done this a long time ago. This really makes driving the car around a lot more enjoyable. When you get new gauges, you've got to test on the engine a little bit too. Make sure nothing changed. Tack works great. I gotta get out of here. Well, she's a little smoky in here yet, but I can reach down, hit my tack recall, and oh yeah, we brought her up to 5,018 RPM there. Not so bad. These things are awesome. So here are my thoughts on these gauges. Uh, looks wise, appearance, they look great. I mean, they're sharp, easy to read. Uh, they're nice and bright. Uh, functionality, uh, there's a lot of options with these. I mean, you could do zero to 60 quarter mile time, tack recall, you name it. But most importantly, the gauges seem to be really accurate. And the tachometer is very quick, uh, which is great, because that's my favorite gauge. Uh, installation, wasn't that bad, guys. I mean, if I could do it, you could certainly do it. And the instructions are really thorough. They have a bunch of pictures, color pictures. Uh, everything is labeled both in the instructions and on the back of the panel. I mean, you really can't mess it up, which is great. Uh, and the best part is price. These are literally half the cost of a lot of their competitors out there. And they seem to be as good, if not better, of a product. I mean, you can't lose going with Intellitronics for sure. So I'm, I'm really, really enjoying them, in fact. I'm going to be a repeat customer. I'm going to pick up another set, I believe, for my square body. I saw that on their uh, online shop today. And I do strongly recommend them. In fact, I'm going to put a link to them down in the description here. Uh, let me know what you think about them. If you have any questions on them or the installation or anything like that, drop it in a comment and I'll be sure to help you out. And as always, thanks guys for watching. Really appreciate it. See you next time.